My goodness, we have reached the end of this whole stinking course. But wipe those tears from your eyes because we still have to talk about sustainability efforts in the face of all those massive economic changes we've been considering in this unit. So if you're ready to get those brain cows milked for the very last time, Let's get to it. Okay, if you've been paying attention throughout this course, we've talked a lot about sustainability in various contexts, like agriculture and urban environment. But here we're gonna think about it with respect to the structure of the globalized economy. And in case you forgot, sustainability refers to the process of using the Earth's resources to meet today's needs while also preserving them for the use of future generations. Now, this massive restructuring of the global economy to support mass consumption has, in general, increased the standards of living for many people throughout the world. And hey, that's a good thing, right? Nothing to sneeze at. However, this arrangement comes at a cost to the environment and that has led to the creation of international policies and efforts to engage in more sustainable development. So let's start with the main problems created by our global economy. First is the depletion of natural resources. You see, because most manufacturing relies on non-renewable resources as inputs, the increasing demand for consumer goods has put a strain on the environment. And that's kind of the thing about non-renewable resources. You use them up and <laughs> they ain't coming back, baby. So for example, industrial agriculture, while it does feed the growing population of the earth, requires intensive irrigation which has threatened to deplete freshwater aquifers because the water is being used up faster than it can replenish itself. And the last time I checked, the world's mouth holes ain't getting less hungry, so that's a problem. Or another example, industrial manufacturing requires inputs of coal and iron and copper and many other non-renewable resources. And at the current rate of consumption, many of those resources will become far more scarce within 20 years. And hey, it's real easy to wag our shaming fingers at the earth for not coughing up more of what we need to live. But the earth might just wag its finger right back and say, well, look at your own self, chump. You got 10 pairs of shoes and your food comes in plastic bags and you buy a new phone every dang year. And the earth has a point, which means we have to ask questions about how sustainable our habits of mass consumption are. Oh, and by by the way, I know that AP exam is coming up real fast, so if you need help studying for it, check out my AP Human Geography Heimler Review Guide, which will help you study only the essentials as fast as possible. That link is in the description, so if you're feeling saucy, Click it. Okay, now the second problem that raises concerns about sustainability is pollution. Factories pollute the environment by the metric buttload, and you know this by now. The byproducts of manufacturing often include chemical saturated water that is released into the environment and airborne chemicals that are released into the air. And that's just on the local scale. But on a global scale, probably the most significant effect of these practices is a growing concern over climate change. You see, since the Industrial Revolution began, the amount of carbon dioxide released into the air has spiked, and that has increased the global temperature at a steady rate. And the warmer the Earth gets, the more the oceans will rise, and that will lead to displacing coastal populations and on and on. And the warmer the earth gets, the more devastating natural disasters will occur like stronger hurricanes and more wildfires. So yeah, our globalized economy has created some problems, but there are in fact some solutions and I'm gonna tell you about two that you need to know. Okay, so the first effort to address these problems in a sustainable way includes the rise of ecotourism, which describes the effort to protect natural landscapes against industrial encroachment by creating sustainable tourist destinations. And maybe that sounds kind of wonky to you because last time I checked, the whole reason an area industrializes is to create economic growth. So why? would an effort to keep industrial practices out of a landscape help the place economically? Well, as it turns out, ecotourism provides economic benefits to locals who often find jobs as guides and hosts to travelers. Additionally, in many ecotourist locations, a portion of the revenue generated by these destinations is allocated for the protection of the environment, and this has become a popular means of sustainable development in many places. For example, a major ecotourism destination you've probably heard of is the Galapagos Islands. Tourists go there from all over the world because the islands are home to over 2,000 species of animals and insects that are only found on those islands. Islands. And while it's a huge source of income for the guides who work there and the Ecuadorian government, they're always trying to strike the balance between keeping the lands pristine and untouched with the increasing demand for tourism. And then to further complicate the issue, much of the money invested into these kinds of ecotourism destination ends up going right back into the pockets of the large tourism businesses and core countries. And the infrastructure created to support ecotourism ends up impacting only a small portion of the poorer country's population. So, you know, as with everything else in this course, it's complicated. And finally, the second effort aimed at sustainability is much grander in scale because it was created by the big mama of international organizations, the United Nations. So in the year 2000, the UN responded to the increasing concern over environmental and social injustices that accompanied our new economic situation by releasing several goals aimed at sustainability. These included goals for environmental sustainability, alleviation of poverty, and gender equity, among many others. And as such, these goals re-envisioned development from being a purely economic reality to more of a holistic approach that considered all dimensions of human flourish. So I guess the question is, how are we doing with these goals? Well, as it turns out, many UN member nations have embraced these goals, but the progress has been frustratingly slow. As of the last evaluation, Denmark has made the most progress toward achieving them, while several countries in Sub-Saharan Africa have made the least progress. But even if the progress is slow, there have been significant indications that our use of renewable power resources and ecotourism are becoming much more prevalent throughout the world. And that, my friend, is it. I can't thank you guys enough for watching these videos and being so kind to me in the comments. Like, I genuinely, 
love you guys, and I hope you know that when you sit down to take that national exam, there will be at least one bald, bearded, gap-toothed man, this guy, cheering you on. So here's all the clicky stuff, and uh, for the last time this year, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.